Hello, fourth graders. So you're ready to be a scientist. You're ready to discover new things. Well, first, before we get into science and all the fun labs, I want to talk about what you as a fourth grader can expect from me, Mr. Chambers, in regards to science for this year, especially here in the first quarter when we're teaching online, when we're learning online. So my commitment to you as a fourth grader is every week, minus the weeks we're testing, there will be two science videos a week, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. This is our first video. And then every other week, so every two Fridays, there's going to be a STEM project. STEM is a fun acronym for science, technology, engineering, and math. And it's a project that I'm going to design so that you can do this at home. And I want you to demonstrate your results over the weekend. It's a fun activity for us to stay engaged with our learning and to be curious. Now, that is two videos every week, every Tuesday and every Thursday. Every other week on Friday, there is going to be a STEM activity, okay? So that's what you have to look forward to here in the first quarter of fourth grade. With each video, there's probably gonna be some questions that you have to answer, a small little quiz to see how we were paying attention during this video. So, this will be our first science lesson of the year. This is the first Tuesday, and you're watching this video. As you're watching this video, there's gonna be some questions that I need you to answer at the end. And those all pertain to the scientific method. What does a scientist do? What do they do? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's understand what a scientist does besides wear a lab coat, put on safety glasses, and make explosions. So, the scientific method. Seven steps for a scientist to study science. Step one, they make an observation using their five senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. They observe the world around them and they discover problems or unique phenomena. What makes this different from that? And as they are observing, they pose a question or a hypothesis, as a scientist call it. We pose a question. So say here in my classroom, I'm observing that, hey, in certain parts, wherever I set up my camera, it's getting a little hot in here. Where would be the coolest spot in my room for me to film these videos in the future so I don't get so hot? And then I pose a question. I think, well, there's my normal desk over th there, which you've seen in a few videos. There's the morning message wall. There's the science area where I'm at right now. And there's my horseshoe table. Which of those four areas would be the coolest for me to work at? That's my question. That's my hypothesis. Where can Mr. Chambers be the coolest? Third thing a scientist does is they design an experiment. Well, I've observed the four places where I've been filming so far. Now, I think I'm going to use a thermometer if I hold it up right, to determine what the temperature is in each different spot that I want to test. The fourth thing, after I've designed my experiment, I've written it down so that I have a plan, I know what my plan is, I'm going to run the experiment. 
I'm gonna run some test trials, see what I need to see. So I doubt just running my experiment once will be sufficient. So I wanna repeat an experiment at least three times. And so for me, I'm gonna run my experiment three days. Each day, I'm going to check the temperatures of all four of the thermometers that I'm placing around the room. By the end of those three days, after I check my thermometers, I can figure out where in my room is the coldest. Where would the best spot be for me to be, in order to be cool in my classroom, okay? So I'm gonna intersplice this video with me checking the temperatures each time, me placing the thermometers, and then at the end, we're gonna come right back here to today. So let's uh, see how that looks. Here I am at the front of my room where my round table is currently located, where I'm doing a lot of my paperwork. Uh, I've got my computer set up and so forth. This is thermometer number one of four that I'm checking to find where the coolest place in my classroom is. So I'm going to check three days and I'm probably going to check three different times in those days when I first get to work right around lunchtime and when I'm about to head home just to see what my temperature is in each location. So location number one if I look in at my thermometer, I see that the red dye in here, there we go, is located at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or about 28 degrees Celsius. Later in the year, I'll explain the difference between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but I'm just getting an initial reading on my thermometer. Walking over to section two, this is where I filmed the first half of my science video. I've got it tucked away over here in the corner. So let's see what number two's temperature is at 7.30 in the morning on day one. So if we look here, hopefully the camera is showing right, it's also saying that we're about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or about 28 degrees Celsius. So far, they're reading pretty even. But it is first thing in the morning Maybe later in the day, one will be hotter than the other. Back over here to stage three, this is where I do our morning messages. And if we look here, we've also got about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. Three out of three are pretty consistent. All right, one last thermometer we need to check, position four, and position four is back behind my main desk where I film our some other videos, okay? So back in here, checking our temperature, reading that red dye on the thermometer. It's also right about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. So, so far there is not a space in my room that is cooler than others. But I'll check again at lunchtime and at the end of the day and over three days to make a comparison to find where the coolest spot in my room is. All right, so I'm in the middle of stage four. I'm running my experiment. I've collected all my data. Now I need to analyze that data. What does the temperature that I read on each one of these thermometers? Tell me about my question. Where's the coldest spot in my room to film a video? Okay, I'm analyzing that data. I'm breaking it down. Why does this mean that? Why was some of my thermometers warmer than other thermometers? Okay, then once I've looked at all that data, analyzed it. I need to share my findings and I'm going to share those findings right now, right here, so you can see 
just where the coldest spot in my room is. So curious minds might want to know, where in my classroom is the coolest spot? Well, after four, several days of testing, messing up how I read my thermometers, and so forth, I shared the data down at the bottom of the screen. I know it's probably real tiny to share, but I found that it is not thermometer one where I have the horseshoe table. It's close, but not the coolest spot in my room. If you think my primary desk is the coolest spot in my room, you'd be wrong. It's the hottest spot in the room. Might have something to do with all these windows behind me. Morning messages aren't that much cooler anyways. It averages about 78 degrees back here on this orange wall. Maybe it's just how bright that color is. So, scholars, that means that the coolest spot in my room is back over here where I'm currently have my science quarter near Randy the robot up on the wall. So, I've done my research, I've read my thermometers, I know that Randy the Robot has the coolest spot in my room. So if I want cool places to film in the future, that is where I'm going to be. Alright, so I've shared my findings. That's what I've discovered through my experiment. My experiment that I created after I observed something using my eyes, my nose, my tongue, my hands or my ears to observe, okay? So I've used my five senses. I've asked a question, where is the coldest place in my room for me to teach? I've designed an experiment. I'm gonna place thermometers in four spots around my room. I've analyzed the data. I've shared my findings. The last thing that a good scientist needs to do is they need to ask more questions. Just because an experiment is done doesn't mean we're done learning. Maybe throughout this, I might wonder, hey, maybe if I wasn't wearing my lab coat inside a room when it's 110 degrees outside, maybe I'd be a little cooler. Maybe if I didn't wear a tie or a button up shirt, maybe I'd be a little cooler. Maybe if I didn't have my windows open, it blocks out the shade, maybe that would be cooler. And so these observations, these questions I'm developing, they can turn into future hypotheses. They can turn into future experiments. They can form into future data that I can use. And that I can share with you, and we can make more questions. That is the beauty of science. And science for you is coming two videos a week, whether it's me talking or another informational project, uh, Science Flicks or CKLA. You're going to be learning science two times a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and every other Friday will be a STEM activity that you can do at home. So, for this first science video of the entire fourth grade school year, what I need you to do is answer the questions about the scientific method below. Answer these questions. Tune in on Thursday for your second science video of the year, and I'll talk to you soon.